Koyan Gurevich Design Bureau became famous for its post-war jets, particularly the MiG-15. Their jet aircraft have been amongst the best in the world for the last 60 years, but they did produce a piston-engine fighter plane that saw combat in World War II, the MiG-3. It's far less well known than MiG's post-war designs, but it had an important role to play in the Great Patriotic War. The company is continuing to develop state-of-the-art designs to this day, despite its humble beginnings. The MiG-3, introduced in 1941, was one of the fastest planes at altitude when it was introduced, faster at 7,000 meters than the BF-109 F-2 and Spitfire Mark V, but at low altitudes its performance was less impressive. MiG's first jet aircraft was the MiG-9, a fast, nimble design, but it struggled with reliability problems. Its service history was very short, as the MiG-15 was fast approaching completion and it offered superior performance. This proved true, and the MiG-15 became one of the best first generation jet aircraft in the world, laying the groundwork for a long series of highly successful jet planes that are equal to or better than virtually all other jet designs in the world. So the first variant of the MiG in War Thunder is the initial production variant, the MiG-315. The in-game model is an early type, uh, you can tell this because it lacks the long, narrow fairings of later models, which allowed fitting of larger caliber weapons. Instead, you've got these small cowlings and bulges. Uh, later on, these were replaced by single, long, thin fairings. The MiG-3 is powered by a Michelin AM35A V12, developing 1350 horsepower. The plane was excellent above 4,000 meters, uh, but on the Eastern Front, combat was nearly always much lower, usually 1,500 meters or less. And at this altitude, the MiG was outclassed by its opponents, uh, the 109 in particular. But above 4,000 meters, it was a very fast aircraft, faster than the 109F and the Spitfire Mark V in level flight. The MiG-3 was armed with a single UBS 12.7 millimeter here in the center and a pair of 7.62 Shikaz light machine guns. This was considered um, a pretty light armament for the time, actually considered undergunned, um, compared to, for example, the Spitfire 5, which had a pair of 20mm cannon, and the 109, which had a nose-mounted cannon. These weapons were also fairly prone to jamming, and the pilots considered the gun sight unreliable, so they engaged at as close a range as possible. The MiG-3 weighed around 600 kilos more than the 109 F2, and it therefore had a higher wing loading, which gave it inferior maneuverability. Overall, it was a poor aircraft at lower altitudes, but above 4,000 meters, it could hold its own, even against the 109 Friedrich. Next is the MiG-315 BK, battle rating 2.3 compared to 1.7 of the initial MiG-3. A number of uh, armament modifications were attempted to upgun the MiG-3. This version here had a gun pod under each wing, mounting a 12.7mm UBS. This practically doubled the firepower, but it reduced the top speed at all altitudes by roughly 20 kilometers an hour. So many pilots removed them to maintain the high speed. Next is one of the later models of the MiG-3, the Model 34, and those cowling fairings I mentioned earlier here, you can see two long thin cowling fairings and also an extension to the uh, exhaust cover. Earlier models had a shorter cover that was only about a third as long. This is a pair of Shivak 20mm cannons. Uh, as I mentioned, a wide range of uh, armament types were tried. Just a pair of 12.7s, um, a pair of 12.7s and underwing gun pods and the pair of cannons but um, pilots were most fond of this setup because it gave a lot of firepower but it didn't uh, cost speed like with the underwing gun pods next is the MiG-9, quite a long jump here because these are all polycarpov aircraft the next Mikoyan and Gorevic aircraft is the MiG-9 at tier 5 battle rating 7.0 the MiG-9 was a very early Soviet jet fighter, the precursor to the MiG-15. It's powered by a pair of RD-20 turbojets, one here and one here. And these are based on the BMW 003 engines, which powered the HE-162. It had very heavy armament, a pair of 37mm cannons and a single... Sorry, a pair of 23mm and a single 37 Earlier prototypes had a single 57mm, but this was quite a tight fit, so they 
try the 37 instead. The armament was so heavy because this was designed to engage bombers. The MiG-9 was capable of 900 kilometers an hour in level flight. It climbed fairly fast and it was fairly agile. But one of the MiG-9's largest drawbacks was engine reliability. The aircraft suffered from flameouts. The air intake would ingest gas from the weapons when they fired. And this would cause a flame out and the engine would cut out. The MiG-9L is essentially identical except for the fact it's got wingtip drop tags and it lacks the cool you know, lightning streaks on the side. <laughs> Next is the MiG-15. Battle rating 8.3. The MiG-15 was the first production swept wing Russian jet. It was discovered after the war that a swept wing improved handling at transonic speeds. It's powered by a Kilimov RD-45F, a copy of the British Rolls-Royce Neen engine, which also powered the F9F Panther and later models of the Vampire. It's considered one of the best first-generation jets. It's fast, agile and well-armed. It's got the same armament as the MiG-9, except it's been moved beneath the air intake, so engine flameouts were no longer an issue. It was much more streamlined compared to the MiG-9. The MiG-9 used a, um, a, a boom and pod system. Uh, the engines were in a pod beneath the fuselage. But the exhaust of the MiG-15 extends all the way to the rear of the fuselage, giving it a smooth shape. The large tail gave it stability at high speeds. Uh, it was almost certain that the MiG-15 could exceed Mach 1 in a dive, but the control services would become unresponsive and the pilot would almost certainly lose control. So pilots were advised to not exceed Mach 0.92. Finally is the MiG-15 BIS, battle rating 9.0. This is an upgrade of the original MiG-15 design. It's powered by a Klimov VK-1, which is an improvement over the original RD-45. It had a larger, a larger turbine, uh, larger combustion chambers, and a revised airflow, airflow through the engine. Sorry, and it was roughly 20% more powerful than the MiG-15 engine. The 23mm guns were placed slightly closer together, and air brakes were added to the upper wing edge. So, that's the Mikoya and Gorevich aircraft currently in the game. This has been Reach for the Sky, thank you very much for watching. See you soon.